nice. So Farina is here, the Archon of the Year is here. And it's very exciting times, I'm excited myself to get into this video. I've been messing around with Farina for a bit now, trying to understand all the mechanics and secrets. And I'm going to share with you what I've learned and my initial review of C0 Farina. But before I get into it, I'm not going to lie, this current abyss isn't perfect for Farina teams. You've got this electro enemy here where you really want a lot of pyro to take down its shield. And for example, even the second half, there's a lot of cryo resistance here. And overall, especially if you haven't optimized your gear yet, I wouldn't expect the most insane gameplay yet. So first of all, she does require a lot of new materials to level up. The actual ascension levels will need you to grind this new boss. And there's also these new lake light -like lilies, which you'll have to grind in a new area of the map. And then there's her talents. She uses the justice books as well as leveling her talents above 8 require new weekly boss materials but I'm going to avoid spoilers and overall she is going to take a lot of work to level up fully but you already know Farina is high maintenance and you'll eventually get it done. So I do want to try sum up her kit as quick and simple as possible. Basically Farina is a very unique character, she brings both advantages and disadvantages to your team and you have to solve these disadvantages in your gameplay to fully benefit from the advantages. As I said, you can say she's a very high maintenance woman. She has off field damage with her skill and her burst does do a little bit of damage but it's mostly used to buff your team with these fanfare stacks. The skill will constantly be draining a percent of all your teammates HP which both increases Farina's damage as well as increases her buffs whilst also letting teammates use gear that benefits from this and a perfect example is this new hunter set. But overall this is why she has special synergy with healers because in order to benefit fully from Farina you want to be fighting against her drain and healing your team since her drain stops after a character reaches half HP so it's a disadvantage if you cannot sort that out and you'll end up losing out on a lot of damage and fanfare stacks. Also she has this special animation here for her talents. Other characters don't really have this type. I wonder why she does this. Also another cool thing is if a teammate fully heals another teammate this activates Farina's talent here, which lets her give extra healing on top for the team. This is actually quite a decent amount, so it's even extra synergy with healers who can heal a lot. And as I mentioned, the burst itself has a huge amount of buffs, which basically scale with how well your team was able to drain and recover their own HP. It gives universal damage bonus, as well as incoming healing bonus to your entire team. And it's quite a lot of this. You have to calculate how this fanfare works, but basically it has potential to even ramp up to higher than 70% damage bonus at full efficiency for your entire team, which can basically be even twice as strong as what you get from Kazuo's talent buff. So Farina's burst buff is quite impressive, but of course it highly varies on how well your team can function. If you aren't able to heal much, then you're missing out on a lot. So I've got a pretty decent build right now with Festering Desire. And I'll show you how much damage her skill can do. Even with this very simple buffs. You can see each pet has different attack speed and deals different amounts of damage. It's very dank but basically the crab deals the most damage. And they also do drain different amounts of HP. One thing you might be disappointed in is that she doesn't have hydro infused basic attacks. I know you get some with her constellation 6, you get some hydro infusion here but obviously this is a C0 video. She also is the first Fontaine character to have both Uisa and Numa and this gives her skill different effects depending on the state. So you start in her normal sub DPS state but with a charge attack you can change into the healing state and you can see this is kind of like how Kokomi works at intervals you get quite decent healing 
and you can even be far away from it and you still get the healing. But the main issue is obviously it stops her damage and it also stops her energy generation too. Also because this is Farina's healing, you won't actually benefit from this extra healing. So basically this healing mode just seems to have low use. Unless you're in the overworld or you have an emergency, maybe this could be used with Nervilette. You'll lose out on her damage and energy generation, but you won't need to add an extra healer. And you should also still be able to use her burst to buff the team. And a lot of his old teams don't really care about teammates' field time as well. As you know, he has child and baiju teams where you barely even swap into them. If you can think of another use, then let me know. Otherwise, for nine out of 10 situations, you want to just keep her in the sub DPS form and just play her with a healer. Also, you might not have known this, but although the alignment damage has the blue Hydra numbers there, it doesn't actually apply Hydra as you can see. It's just a blue number. So how does she compare with other Hydra sub DPSs? But actually a big advantage that she has is that she doesn't require normal attacks in order for her pets to deal damage. Unlike Xingqiu and Yelan, where you will need to be spamming normal attacks in order for their burst attacks to activate. Many DPSs don't revolve around normal attack spam. And even if you do use normal attacks a lot in a team, you still have burst animations or swapping between teammates and using their skills. So there is downtime and I think people will soon realise that Farina attacking regardless is very nice quality of life. Therefore, you could say she's similar to a Hydra version of Albedo in that regard. The pets can also move around in the battlefield, which is another big advantage, I would say. You can see even how they can teleport. This is in comparison to Kokomi, where unless you have sacrificial fragments, her jellyfish is stuck in one place. It's going to be really nice in the overworld. It's going to be really nice in the overworld. Even though this might not be very optimal, the fact that I can do dailies without needing to use characters burst is actually very nice. And when characters get low HP, you can switch her mode and I can heal them. Actually, I would be very interested if it ends up being optimal in some chambers for you not to use her burst always and you instead save it for later. If there's weaker enemies, you can just get by using characters skills and saving her burst when you need that extra damage. That'd be very interesting. I actually don't mind these kind of comparisons, but you could say Farina is another character similar to Bennett, Kazuha, Yelan, C6 Farazan, Nahida, where Farina is the latest insane support character if she can fit into your teams. But obviously you can't directly compare supports like this and a lot of the time you can even stack these supports together. Like Kazuha and Bennett is a very famous duo. Also each of these characters have their own utilities and purposes. Like Bennett you want attack scaling characters for him to buff. Maybe they have abilities that can snapshot his buffs. Farazan you want to be buffing Animo DPS. Nahida you want to play Dendro teams and so on. And now Farina has very good buffs and very good sub DPS damage but she wants you to build a team around her like using specific healers. But yeah, it's quite obvious Farina will be very popular regardless and she should have high usage with this high level of support and utility and be played in a wide variety of teams just like these kinds of characters. So as you've seen, she deals a lot of skill damage and not that much burst damage, but she is very much a skill focused damage dealer. So you really want Golden Troop to buff her skill damage. You can farm this set in this domain and luckily it comes with this Hunter DPS set which synergizes very well with Farina as you might already know. There might be some niche teams where you might be able to use Tenacity of the Millilith. It gives her 20% HP and will be a lot weaker than Golden Troop for Farina's personal damage. But if there's some niche teams where Farina's damage is less important than another damage dealer's, potentially this could see use. I don't expect this set trade-off to be too relevant, but I'll definitely be looking forward to see if future strats use this somehow. I need to give a warning that Voru Karsha's glow won't work well with Farina because this mechanic here was designed for specifically taking damage. 
and not like the new Fontaine mechanic of increasing or decreasing HP. Anyway, these are the pieces I'm using at the moment. I've got some nice pieces here. And because she is HP scaling and has high damage bonus with buffs already, it means you can use either a HP goblet or a Hydro Goblet. I have looked at some calcs and it really is fighting over small percents, similar to Nervilette, who I calculated before. So they should be very similar. So just use whichever has better substats, though it's likely for your HP Goblet to be stronger because it has a higher drop rate. I've also got these other pieces if I need more energy recharge. I actually managed to get quite lucky with my Golden Troop pieces. But that's one thing you will need to factor in, which is for most teams, she will want to be building quite a bit of energy recharge. For example, I'm using about 170 in this team here with Kazuha on Favonia Sword. Although her skill does still function and she can do damage without her burst, if you don't build enough energy recharge for your team and you can't use her burst often, you will be losing out on a lot of team buffs. And the amount you need, it does depend on the team you're playing. If you're playing her with Hydro teammates, if you're using Favonius weapons. But I would say a general ballpark is similar-ish to what you use for Shincho already. So like 170, 180 energy recharge would probably be covering a lot of teams you might be playing. And we can get into our weapons. And I actually haven't done calcs. Since she is like a support in a sub DPS, it's just going to vary too much depending on the team you're playing her in and she definitely will be played in a lot of teams. But you can tell that since she's a HP scaling character and she wants energy recharge and obviously she can crit, then you will be looking for specific weapons. So her signature weapon will consistently be her strongest option. It's obviously had intentional design to work well with her giving a lot of crit, giving HP and damage. Just make sure you have enough energy recharge if you do use this weapon. This is also Primordial Jade Cutter, which gives crit and HP. Although Farina won't really benefit from this attack bonus since she has HP scaling damage. There's also a Verena Sword, which gives a lot of energy recharge and gives a team energy recharge. There's also Doc Hand's Assistant, which gives stats that she wants. There's also this weapon which you can get from fishing, which also gives energy recharge. A special mention to Festering Desire, which is what I've been testing her on a lot. This is very strong, potentially her best general use 4 star option, since you get energy recharge, damage percent and crit rate. A lot of people probably don't have this though, since it was only available in an uh, event. So only veteran players will have this, but I've already covered there are definitely alternatives. Another special mention will go out to Key of Cards Nisut, Nilu signature weapon. This gives a lot of HP, which is good for Farina, and also it gives EM buffs to the team. So this can be very strong, potentially even as relevant as her signature sword. If you are playing Farina in reaction teams that can utilize this well, I'll have to see which weapons speedrunners prefer. But generally speaking, I would expect either her signature weapon for 5 stars or Favonius Sword or Festering Desire for 4 stars to be her most popular options. And maybe I'll do weapon counts for specific teams in a future video. So Farina is a very strong character, but in order to benefit from Farina's strength, you'll need to make sure she can fit into your team. She's definitely not a character we can just throw into old teams. Otherwise, you may only be using Farina to like 50% of her potential. Whichever main DPS you want to play, you may have to re-evaluate the other teammates you used to play and try find a compromise even, like adding a healer who you may not have been playing before but that healer would help you utilize Farina's whole kit. Ideally, you might have been playing a team where you already have a good healer and you can just slot in Farina into your existing team and she will synergize well right away. But that may not always be the case. And one thing you do have to realize is since the Abyss has three chambers, even if you can start a fight without a healer and Farina will still be draining and buffing the team, for the rest of the Abyss, your team will probably be stuck at low HP and then all your team's damage will be going down the drain. Of course, in the overworld, you can just switch her form and turn her into a healer, but in the Abyss, that's not really feasible. 
One cool thing though is if you were already playing a team which has prototype Amber, maybe a DPS Kokomi or Novilette, then the healing you get here is now extra helpful for Farina. Just don't expect it to fully substitute for a healer and just putting it on a random character because it won't. Even with a healing bonus circulate, Farina's burst healing buffs, maybe Ocean Hued Clam, you're still not going to reach healing 50% of your teammates HP and I don't think it's going to substitute for a proper healer. So over 20 seconds Farina will be draining 50% of each teammates HP. As we know Bennett and Shinobu are two of the most used healers in the game. They don't just heal but Bennett has very powerful attack buffs whereas Shinobu can deal a ton of hyperbloom damage. However, they both have a big disadvantage with Farina, which is that they can only heal one character at a time. And not only that, but they both have individual weaknesses, since Bennett stops healing above 70% HP, whereas Shinobu, unless you keep her on field to benefit from her own healing, she will constantly be cutting her own HP and staying low. Ultimately, you can definitely still use these characters in certain teams to great effect, but I'd say you definitely prefer playing flexible teams where you can switch around and make sure teammates are getting healed adequately. It might be quite difficult to play Bennett in a team that has very strict setups and rotations and you'll have to work around it. Alternatively, there are various team-wide healers. Now, some of these characters might have been lacking in utility aside from healing. But now, thanks to the dilemma in Farina teams, being great at team healing is actually quite important even just by itself. Jean has very strong burst healing. Barbados. And minor healing with this talent. Sai also has healing on her burst and her first talent. Unfortunately, I don't have Sai built. The cool thing with these guys is that they can use the VV set for extra debuffs. This gives them a bit more extra utility. Jean does have grouping, but it's not very good, even if you have her constellation one. Still, there is a conversation that Jean can be a budget alternative to Kozua for a nice Farina Jean core. Baiju and Yao Yao can work in Dendro teams as the team wide healers. Baiju in particular has more quality of life since he can team wide heal easily with his elemental skill, whereas Yao Yao needs to switch in and be in her burst mode to really heal your team up to full. Baiju also has mini seamless shields with his burst which can help with interruption resistance for your on-field character. But of course, Yao Yao being a free 4 star is her own advantage. If you can find a team that works around mostly her skill healing, that would be very nice. Then there's also Charlotte and Mika and these are the cryo team healers. It's actually pretty stonks because I went ahead and I got C6 Mika but he was actually very underwhelming even in physical teams. He just didn't do enough but now that his team healing is more important it could quite easily make Arena Mika a very powerful support core. Not even just physical teams since his buffs do include attack speed. Say if you play them alongside a C6 Farazan he should have gone up in strength even for just normal attacking DPSs like Wanderer. If anyone who mains Wanderer is planning on testing this, then I'll look forward to it. Charlotte, on the other hand, I think will have more advantages in Freeze or Mono Cryo type teams, like Ayaka teams for example. Charlotte's skill has interval damage over time, so she can easily use Tenacity of the Millilith for team attack buffs. And if you build her with enough energy recharge, she can even use TTDS well. Her healing does scale based on her own attack, so TTDS will be less efficient for healing. But for this big attack buff, I think it's worth it to try build around this. Again, you will need a lot of energy recharge because she's very reliant on her burst in order to heal the team.
Lastly, I do want to talk about Kokomi. Of course, I make a lot of videos on Kokomi, so I think this is very important. A very interesting thing with Kokomi, and also Noel, and funnily enough, uh, C6 Dory, if you have her, is that you can play these characters in the on field DPS role and they will do team wide healing at the same time. Kokomi can also do strong off-field healing, easily 6k, 7k at a time with just her skill, but it is for one teammate at a time. Her team-wide healing is in her elemental burst attacking. But what this does mean is whether you're playing Kokomi or Noel or C6 Story, for old on-field Kokomi DPS teams, you should just easily be able to slot in Farina and see massive benefits with a team like this or this. However, as mentioned in my initial thoughts video a few days ago, since he often requires you to build a very different team, it's very possible to lose some very key utility or pre-existing synergies in your team, which could end up negatively impacting your new team, or even a team where you have to lose out on a reaction to fit her in. For example, I can tell you with Hu Tao, an old team like this or this, feels way stronger than trying to fit in Farina this abyss. And it's not because of Farina's personal strength, but she doesn't apply enough Hydro on her own to work well as the solo Hydro with Hu Tao. So you need a double Hydro team, which is a very big issue this abyss, since this chamber one enemy has very high resistances. So you really benefit from Pyro Shred, which you get from Kazuha or Sucrose, as well as fighting this enemy really benefits if you can apply a lot of Pyro too, which you also would get from playing Kazuha. And you can't really get either if you try fit in Farina, at least for my testing. Another weakness is not everyone has managed to farm a strong hunter set. And there's a lot of DPSs, which I theorized in my recent video, that one of the main reasons they may want to try new Farina teams is that the characters will benefit a lot from this stronger artifact set. But if you're like me and you don't really have that much hunter pieces, then you're losing a lot of damage without this new set. For example, this mix set is much weaker than Hunter Uncle Lee, potentially even 18% weaker depending on your assumption. But since I don't have good hunter pieces for her yet, my Klee is losing a ton of potential damage with Farina, which can heavily impact the strength of how a new team feels. So you might have to be patient with Farina and just keep grinding until you see the full potential of your new teams. So congratulations to everyone who managed to get Farina. She has very fun animations and seems very strong personally and she should definitely be a very significant team building character in Genshin moving forward. It would just take a lot of playing around to figure out the best teams to play her with your damage dealers. It's going to take a lot of experimentation and I'll definitely be working on future videos for characters in specific. Thank you for watching.